Is it in response? Ah! <laughs> Today we're going to explore a secret park connector to look at how some of our wildlife manage to thrive in our urbanized world. This longkang ah? Yep, this longkang. And since this area belongs to Marine Parade GRC, we'll be inviting our homeboy PCG Senpai to join us in this urban wildlife exploration. Singapore has been a garden city for the longest time and recent efforts of trying to restore nature back to our island have shown some success. So we've seen the return of birds such as orangutan hornbills and considerably larger mammals such as smooth-coated otters. Uh, so in Singapore actually there's a lot of greenery everywhere. Like. It's not just here along the park connectors. Um, but the park connectors I think particularly, I think I feel it's, it's quite special because we are building quite an extensive network around Singapore which allows I think people to exercise, to walk and literally connecting one park from the other. And although man-made in, in many ways, but you find that actually nature begin to occupy the space very rapidly. So behind us here is the coffee shop area. Which has very good food when it's open. Yes, 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 the Sinky Black Herbal. Yeah, herbal yeah, chicken. <laughs> so here you can find a lot of pest-like birds, such as the Javan miners, the rock pigeon, the house crows. They are highly adaptable to many different kinds of environments and they reproduce at a really fast rate. And obviously they eat almost anything and they you know how to enjoy good Singapore food. Is it alright if I call you like TCJ Senpai or...? You can call me whatever. Okay. <laughs> okay. One of the efforts I think PUB has in terms of managing our water supply is also I think drainage, which is very important. So even something which is I guess built mainly to provide for drainage in the area has also become a habitat. Mm. I think for all sorts of different species as well. Because we are near East Coast Park, the water here is often a combination of fresh water and sea water, so not every fish can stand these conditions. However, hardy fishes like the tilapias and other cyclids still manage to carve out a niche and call this place home. Oh, there, are, there are also dragons along the park connectors. Where, oh! Yeah. <laughs> there, there, there. Can you see? It's, 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 on the, it's on the... Oh, okay. Straighty! Yeah, so this is actually a striated heron. Herons, they are this water bird. When the tide is low, you can just see them walking around here, mm. trying to peck on the food. And it looks like it has a short neck, but when it's feeding, right, sometimes they can just like, mm, you know, like, mm, all the way, and then they will peck for the fish. No, no, how far are you running? How are you normally? What to do? What to do? I don't know what to do. Yeah, so this is the African land snail, and it's an it's Literally from Africa? Uh, yes, I, I think so. Some countries eat it. Oh really? Yeah. Have you tried? Uh, no. Okay. But I've seen the but they, video. But they look quite succulent and a lot right. of quite big, right? Right on top, perching on the roof, yeah, right there's the, corner, the oriental right. honey buzzard. So it's a raptor species. So raptors they are like bigger and they are always soaring the side, something like eagles lah. So this is a huge mango tree. Mm. And there's a lot of mangoes. When they are ripe, right, you can see a lot of parakeets starting to roost around here. Yeah, the fruits are sweet, you find a lot of human beings as well. When we came here the other day, we actually saw a monkey tight roping <laughs> along this one. Across the canal? Yeah, across the canal. So okay. also solitary males, so they usually Too leave their details. troops when they are adults to find another herd oh, of okay. females to, you know... I don't think it's common. I've not heard of many sightings exactly. of monkeys so around we were here. Like, so I think if you begin to have all these corridors linking different parts, I think it becomes very important. So you want whole catchments here in Central Catchment and all the way down to Southern Ridges. If you're able to work out all the networks connecting all these different sort of forested areas, I think you also encourage all the different species to begin mm. to propagate. There's like a whole row of black glossy starlings there. Where? And then the Those on the... the... Yeah, those on the antennae. And they are small black birds with red eyes and they are what you hear on Orchard Road in the evenings. This is the black nip orion. It's a very distinctive yellow bird. If you see a yeah. yellow bird flying, it's probably this guy. We have reached a more well-to-do residential area where you see private house owners planting flowers and trees in their gardens. And when you have flowers and fruits, that's where you attract insects and birds as well. Different species, yeah. they feed on different. different things. So these species, they actually feed mainly on nectar, pollen. It's different compared to you know, the java mice, which eats like human food. So you get a more colourful range of birds and insects. Oh, your own look, there's a turtle. Oh. <gasps> Wait, you're slider. Hello. Now, I used to have a terrapin and it keep growing. So I think a lot of people, when they buy terrapins for the kids, they don't realize it's going to actually will grow all the way to that stage. Different canals, they have varying degrees of naturalization. The most prominent example would be, you know, the Bishan Amunkyo Park. So that's 
very naturalized and then you have uh, some like the drone canals, not so much. So here is a bit more concretized, I guess more traditional canals, mm -hmm. but what we have begun to do, I'm hoping PUB will do it here as well, <laughs> if they have a budget, um, is actually to, perhaps where it's less concretized, you break down the barriers, you begin to put rocks, you landscape a bit, you put plants that will thrive. Mm -hmm. And actually in a number of areas where they've done that, actually it's become really quite beautiful. Yeah, no, right, right at the highest part of the tree, right? Yeah. Is oh. rather be just below the crown of the oh, tree. Oh, I saw it. It's a collared kingfisher. So he's a better spotter than you. I, I, I'm sure. Yeah, it's blue and it's a white yeah. chest. So <clears> actually, <throat> there's a pair here, and they built the nest. You want to guess where? <laughs> oh, you know where's the nest? Yes. Oh. I know where's the nest. So like in a while or in a, like yeah, natural environment, they will build nests in termite mound, old termite mounds. Or, holes they can find in the trees and mm. also bird nest ferns because their beak is not strong so they can't really pack their way but the ones here, right, the pair here they actually have a nest in one of the weak holes Oh, one of these? It's really interesting to see how they actually make use of the areas around here, the man-made structures It's like a free BTO, you know He responds. Ah! <laughs> this is the uwu bird that wakes us up every morning, and this is actually how they call out to the females. But there are a lot of people who are annoyed by them and would like them to be removed. That's a dilemma, right? You have mm. residents who are not happy you come, then whether you're, you know, then, then your animal lovers be why you're chasing yeah. them away. This is a nature habitat, but this is where we need to learn to coexist. Eh? Yeah. It's amazing to see how our local flora and fauna thrive in our urban settings such as the concretized longgangs and you can have kingfishers building a nest inside weak holes. So even though we don't have exotic species like we see in nature reserves and wetlands around here, but the common species, supposedly common species, are quite a sight to behold as well. I would like to think of them as my little neighbourhood friends that I say hi once in a while to, you know like Cinderella? Hello! Hello! Yeah? Thank you, Mr. PCJ Senpai, for joining us on this urban wildlife exploration journey. I hope you enjoyed. Yes, I did, walk. I did. I mean, I think sometimes when we run or we walk, but we don't always notice, but sometimes just pausing and looking out at things, you actually begin to look at things from a different perspective as well. Yes. So, good to encourage residents or Singaporeans to really just explore Singapore. There's still a lot to see. Yes, even like outside your area, you know, just take a yeah, small yeah, yeah. walk and yeah. look around. Uh, your there, there are a lot of things to just appreciate. You can just slow down, pause, and take it in. Mm. That's all for today. Just keep thinking. Actually met you very early on. They were giving out this bursary award. 2011 or 2011. You were a student. Yes, I was a student. Again, I what? Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> so okay, I, I remember, I remember the you. event. I mean, I that know was... who you were. That was... Okay, all right. <laughs> I, yeah. but, and just then, take the money and the award. Okay. I mean, I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's why we really put when. Uh, but I did. Okay, hear I, this I remember. Thing, and I, I remember. remember I don't remember exactly what I spoke, but it was quite motivating and inspirational. Oh, really? I remember, like, usually people just don't care for the, you know, the entire presentation, but I was there actually listening intently to you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, so. Because most like, people don't listen. Yes. And then when you become more famous, from you're like, I should be singing before. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank you. what you said that day, although I don't really remember Nor do I. But yeah, I, I think roughly I probably know. I mean, I, mean, it, I guess yeah. for students who are giving awards, uh, too, is also, I think, I think often it's asking students to also think about giving back to society. Mm. I, I guess you are also, in terms of <laughs> programs like this, where also introducing nature for us to learn more. And I think also, when you learn, I think you also learn to appreciate the environment more mm. as well. I like to ask why you agree on this shoot. Good. Well, I was free this morning. Nothing better to do. So you know, you no. Know, well, I mean, I thought it was. Uh, like I said, it's it's. I mean, it's a program which, um, at least based on your brief, uh, <laughs> I assume that's how it's going to turn up. It's about I think understanding the nature that's around us. I think especially in Singapore. I mean, that's. I I do find that actually we have quite a remarkable story. I know that sometimes from a purist perspective, we wish that there won't be there wasn't any development mm. or that. But we do live in a city and a and a nation all wrapped in one. And that whole coexistence is actually really quite a, it's quite a challenge. But it's also something that I think for many experts also look at, actually it's a really interesting balance yeah. that we have struck. 
And I thought if this program would be able to show that even in your own, really in your own backyard, in your own neighborhood, you know, I think a lot of people will run or walk, but sometimes they don't pay attention. But hopefully, if they watch the program, it's like, hey, actually, maybe we should just pause and look at it. Like, hey, actually, there's so, so many things to see, you know. And I think that's really what it is, right? It's learning to love our own land, our own, you know, our own country and our own backyard and our own walkways and, and things like that, which seemingly we take it for granted. We walk by every day and it's like, okay, mm. what's, what's the big deal? But suddenly, it does. I think about photography, right? You zoom in and you focus on stuff. Hey, where is that? It's like, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, the local you know, or sick club park connector. It's like, oh, really? And there's all these different mm -hmm. scenes. Then you be, we saw we see things, but we suddenly don't really see. Mm -hmm. You know, we look, but you don't see things. But so that maybe opens your eyes to even in your own area that there's really a lot that we can learn to appreciate. Because sometimes as Singaporeans, we are Singapore is so boring, you know, so small. What is that to do? It's just a lot. 